Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus the Apostle often greets his readers, and now it's my privilege to greet you. The gift of God's undeserved love for everyone gathered here today. And the peace that passes understanding. Free and clear. I say now that we got that out of the way, but that's exactly what is in the way. That's why we gather here to receive God's grace and peace, to have our anxious hearts calm, to have our fears relieved, to have our sins forgiven, to know to the very core of our beings that things between us and God are right. Today in Malachi, the Lord is prophesying a judgment. He's telling his people that the messenger's come, the messenger's going to prepare the way of the Lord of hosts himself. And you almost have an idea as you read through this, and then you look at the New Testament, that he could be talking about three different things. One, the coming of the messenger who prepares the way for Jesus, who is God's chosen messenger, who then will ascend and then come back with the final judgment. All of this is in here. The preparation to receive the Savior and the preparation for the Savior to return as well as that time when the Savior is here doing his work. Because in that judgment, we need to be ready ahead of time. He is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. God's working us up to be hot and lathered here because... Neither one of these things are things that we would want to face willingly and head on. A refiner's fire is easy enough to understand. You go into a mine or out panning gold or whatever else, you get a bunch of ore and you start heating it till the rocks melt, which means that it's pretty warm. And when it's hot enough, the different stones float at different levels. And the precious metals tend to be the heaviest, and so they're down at the bottom. So you skim off the rock and the other metals that are floating on top. And there at the bottom would be the gold, and if there's any silver on top of that, it would be there, and then whatever else. It's a simple extraction process overall, and unless you're the lump of rock that's being extracted from. And if rocks had nerve endings, I imagine they would not enjoy that feeling at all. In our colleague today, we prayed that the Lord would stir up our hearts to make ready the way of his son, that by his coming we may be able to serve him with pure minds. We want God to purify us, just as the ore is purified into pure gold and pure silver. We want to sparkle and shine, but Unfortunately, we can't do it for ourselves, and we don't particularly like the process of it being done. We don't like being melted down into our basic elements. We don't like when the heat is on. The fuller soap is less familiar to most people right now, but a lot of you still have dealt with some form of lye soap. There are bushes that can be burned down and extracted, and they would mix that up into an early form of bleach. And they would use it on the dirtiest of clothing. It would even get oil out of cloth, blood stains out of cloth. And it will raise blisters on your skin if you're not careful. And the one who was doing it would oftentimes lay the stuff out and actually walk on the clothing and work it in. Is who wants to have their hands up to here with something that could take the hide off of them? And when they had been worked around long enough, kick them into the water and let them rinse clean. And God's saying, I'm coming to you with that. I'm coming to throw you in the smelter and melt you down. I'm coming to put you on the stovetop or out in a cauldron in the backyard and boil you with lye soap 
I'm going to get the sin out of you one way or another. Who can stand when he appears? Well, if this is what happens when he appears, I'm out. I can't take it. I can't face it. That's too much pain and suffering for me. <coughs> and I imagine for most of you also. Really for all of you. For God to work every sin out of you, he has to get into every fiber of your being. As a surgeon, he has to cut everything out. As the cleaner, he has to scrub it in. As the smelter, he has to melt down everything that's impure and let it float up to the top so he can skim it off and throw it away. In the harvest, he's the one who cuts it down and then he beats it and throws it up until all the chaff is blown away and only there left is the pure wheat and all of those things. The object of the attention gets a pretty thorough workout. And the beating, the scrubbing, the melting, the smelting, whatever it is, is not comfortable. It's full of pain and sorrow and suffering. Who can stand? Finally, no one. <coughs> and that's part of the point of what we have right here. To face God's judgment on your own is to face God's judgment knowing that you're going down. But in Christ, that judgment has been faced for you. He suffered the smelting. He suffered the scrubbing. Now, it's still not comfortable when God purifies us of our sins, but it's not the absolute pain that Christ suffered on our behalf. It hurts when God reaches in and takes away a favorite vice. We can give up. Nine sins out of ten, but that tenth one just hangs on. Or comes back. We may not want it there, but it reappears. Whether by the clock or by the calendar, it shows up once again. <coughs> and even that one sin is enough to keep us out of God's presence, out of his grace and his glory. Only through the forgiveness of Christ do we have the salvation that we need. Only through the forgiveness of Christ are we saved this final purification process. Because if God melted down the entire creation and looked for what was good on its own, he would find nothing. Because everything is crippled and tainted by sin. Even that which is somewhat neutral, the rocks and the hills and the valleys and the water and the sky and all of those things, but the animals are bent and twisted by it, and certainly humans. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot save those around us. We cannot save our world. And so when we ask God to make us pure, we ask God to help us with some hard choices and to receive some hard lessons. We ask God to pluck out what's wrong but not leave us void and empty, but rather fill it with what's right. <coughs> As the psalmist said, create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Don't only tear out my sin, but fill it with your holiness. Don't only take out my crippled, broken heart, but fill it with the heart of your son, Jesus. Give me more and better than I have right now so that I can face you this day and in the judgment. And that's exactly what he does. God's love for you is complete. He sent Jesus into the refiner's fire. He talks about the cup he must consume. He talks about the baptism with fire that he must face. <coughs> he talks about doing that out of his love for you. Who can stand? By ourselves, none of us. But because Christ could stand in that judgment, because he could receive the punishment for our sins in his own body, we can now receive God's forgiveness and God's healing in our bodies. We can allow God to make changes in us that we cannot make in and of ourselves. We can surrender our vices, our unholiness, can turn them over to God and not desire them back again. 
we can be forgiven and we can be forgiving. We can be loved and we can be loving. We can live as God's people as he has called us to be and he has made us to be. Because if we don't face God's ongoing purification through the confession of our sins and reception of his forgiveness, if we don't come regularly to his altar and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and walk away knowing that he has had mercy and that he has fed us with his own son, body, and blood. If we don't hear, I forgive you all your sins and trust that is his word of grace and hope for us, then on that last day, we will melt like the mountains in front of God's wrath and anger. And we will run away and be heard of no more. But we can stand in front of that blazing glory of Jesus on the last day. No matter how bright he shines, no matter how glorious and wonderful he is, and we can open our eyes wide and say, that's my Jesus, and he loves me, and he will take me to be with his Father forever. Because our eyes will be completely pure and holy and we will be able to gaze on God himself and come to him in joy and live with him in peace forever and ever. God grant that you allow him to purify you, to cleanse you, to continue to make you holy through word and sacrament, that he create a path in front of you and that you walk that path in joy through this life into life everlasting. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace that surpasses understanding keep you in Christ Jesus. Amen.